Today's lesson uh, is on the domain. Um, and as you remember, the domain is the set of values of x. And um, is represented by the x-axis, if you're looking at a graph. When we define a function, for example, f of x is equal to 5x minus 1, we have to specify the domain. In this case, I have left the domain without specification, then this implies that the domain, the x values that go into this function, are the set of real values, real numbers. If, on the other hand, I specify g of x as, let's say, 3x plus 1 divided by 2, and I specify my domain as x is greater than 5 and x belongs to the set of real numbers, then when I draw the curve, I will only, uh, the straight line, I will only have values starting after 5. So the first remark that we're going to make on the domain of the function is something called the vertical line test. You remember that in the definition of a function, we said that every element in the domain maps to one element in the range. So you could not have an element in the domain mapping to two elements in the range. This is not a function, but this is. So let's consider, for example, a function that looks like so. Of course, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. In this case, if you consider, for example, this point, it represents the mapping from this value of x to this value of y. And in this case, this particular x-value has one specific y value that it maps to. So if you're standing here, you know where to go. This is the curve. In this case, we find that an element in the domain maps to only one element in the range. And in this case, this is a function. However, if we have a different kind of function, and it looks like so. Again, by looking at it, we can see that it's pretty obvious that each element in the x-axis maps to only one. But how can we be sure? A nice trick would be to apply what we call the vertical line test. And that's basically taking a vertical line and passing it along. This tells me that at this point, for example, for this value of x, I have this particular value of y. One element in the domain maps to one element in the range. And again, the same applies here. And you can see that if we pass this ruler along this vertical line, if we pass it along, at any particular point, the ruler crosses the curve only once, indicating that that particular value of x has one particular value of y. In this case, if you move the ruler across and it crosses the curve only once at any one time, then what you're looking at is a function because one particular element in the domain maps to one particular element in the range. So how does a relationship look like if it is not a function?
consider this. If this is a curve that you're looking at, the ruler crosses the curve only once, all the way along, until it reaches this point. Starting from here, you have a problem. And if you look at this value in the domain, it can map to two values in the, in the range. One value is here, and the other is here. So you break the definition of a function. This element in the domain maps to two elements in the range. Therefore, this is not a function. So the vertical line test is a way to discover if it is a function or not. And it can be done by scanning across and if you find that the ruler crosses the curve twice at any one particular point, then what you have is not a function. So this is the first remark. The second remark is what we call the horizontal line test. And this is a test that is only applied to functions, i.e. to curves that have passed the vertical line test. So let's say that uh, we have a graph of a function that looks like so. Obviously, if we run the vertical line test, we can tell that this is a function because for every y value, the curve is only crossed once at that particular y value. Now that we have established that this is a function, we can determine the type of function it is by running what we call the horizontal line test. And the horizontal line test is simply, as the name implies, done by holding a straight, straight edge and scanning across. Now, for any y value, this ruler crosses the curve only once. So for example, here, for this particular y value, the curve is crossed once. And similarly, for this y value, the curve is crossed once. And the same applies for all the y values. So we call this function 1 to 1. That means for every one value of x, the curve maps to one value of y. So, in other words, each value of x has a unique value of y that corresponds to it. The other type of function that this test can tell us about is, for example, a curve such as this one. Again, it's obvious that this is a function. That's what the vertical line test tells us. Now that we have established that it is a function, let's scan across. And again, here we find that we have, for this particular value of y, we have two values. For this particular value of y, we have two values of x. That means that we have x1 and x2 give us y. That's why we call this type of function many to 1. That means we have many x values that give us one y value. And in this case, it is this y. So keep in mind that as a result, 1 to 1 and many to 1 are functions 
but one too many are not functions they are only relations and this is the case where the function fails the vertical line test The third remark is about domain restrictions. And this applies to certain types of functions that give you mathematical issues. For example, let's say that f of x is equal to 1 over x. What values of x constitute the domain well I can substitute any value of x into this function except for x equals 0 because that would give me 1 over 0 and division by 0 is not allowed so my domain in this case would be x belongs to the set of real numbers except that x does not equal to 0 because you cannot divide by 0 now this is sometimes a bit too long if x is real you can simply write it as 1 over x and you can avoid writing x belongs to the set of real numbers and you simply state x does not equal 0 which is the restriction x belongs to the set of real numbers without the restriction is the domain take another case let's say g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2 what value of x would give you a problem and since it's a fraction the problem is division by 0 obviously x cannot equal 2 because when x is 2 the denominator is 2 minus 2 which is 0 and you would be dividing by 0 so in this case the domain is the set of real numbers except x equals 2 or simply you can say that x does not equal 2 so the first type of restriction is when you are dividing by 0 try h of x equals 3x plus 1 divided by 7 minus x in this case we will only have a problem if we have a zero in the denominator which is when x is 7 we obviously can have a zero in the numerator that's not a problem because we can divide zero, zero by something else so our restriction in this case is x does not equal 7 and this helps us avoid dividing by zero the domain is the set of real numbers with the exception of x equals 7 or simply x does not equal 7 another type of restriction is in the case of functions that are uh, square roots for example f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2 now we know that we cannot have a negative under the square root so what is the domain of this function what values of x can go into it well we want what's under the square root which is x minus 2 to be either greater or equal to 0 this means if you solve this inequality that x is greater than or equal to 2 this value of x or this range of values of x guarantees that whatever you substitute for x you'll end up with either a zero or a positive under the root so in this case the domain is x is greater than or equal to 2. let's try another thing another function let's say g of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 6 again 
we don't want negatives under our square root we want the 2x plus 6 to be either positive or 0 and if you solve this inequality 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6 x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and this range of values of x guarantees that whatever you substitute for x you'll either get a 0 or a positive so our domain is x is greater than or equal